over there is what could be a beautiful piece of Italian pottery. It might even be Batossi. Hello everyone, it's Tiffany with Thrifting Vegas. I shop at thrift stores, estate sales, garage sales and discount stores for items I can resell for profit on online platforms like eBay, Poshmark and OfferUp. Today I am back at my favourite Goodwill at Rainbow and Cheyenne. It's Friday afternoon and hopefully they are just restocking the shelves. So let's go in and see what they have. Let's go thrifting! It is 4.30 in the afternoon and it's really warm in the 90s today. We will have to have a look, see what the colour of the day is. It looks like it is still green. So let's go inside and see what they have. Let's grab a cart. I'll pop in my reusable shopping bags and my thrifting Vegas blanket. And as we make our way to the hard goods section at the back of the store, I want to share with you a really fun question that I was emailed this week. Have I ever found money in a piece of clothing that I've thrifted? I had to think about that for a second and I don't think I found money in clothing, but I bought a journal at Savers once and when I got it home, I was flipping through and there was a $20 bill in the back of it. I do have a fun story though. I was in a little thrift store once watching a lady try on a blazer. She put her hands in the pockets and brought out a roll of cash. She was lovely. She gave the cash to the ladies in the store and they in return gave her the blazer for free. If you have ever found money in clothing or anything else in a thrift store, do leave me a comment and let me know. It would be really fun to compare stories and as you know I do read all of your comments. Here we are in the hard goods section and on the very first shelf is this amazing party light watermelon tea light holder. I love the colors and the raised seeds so we'll definitely get that. Here is a little Irish ornament. The stopper that Jake found the other day. Look at this. Three dollars. They sent me the other angels were busy. That's absolutely a gorgeous little picture there. We'll get that too. Oh, let's get our blanket in the cart. There we go. <laughs> oh, we'll pop that in safely along with our watermelon tea light for two dollars. And let's see what else we can find. I'm often asked if brands as a whole are good to thrift. For example, Party Light or Princess House. But it really depends on whether the piece you find is selling well in the current market. So what I recommend you do until you get familiar with actual certain uh, styles in a brand is look them up online ebay solds is a great place to start and that way you can see if the piece that you have found is selling profitably in the current market here's an interesting little marble piece i'm not sure what that is possibly a sugar holder you could use it for anything some mallard duck bookends these are a bit worse for wear what else have we got here couple of candle holders back there not ever such good quality this is pretty i believe this is a gorham lead crystal it's five dollars you could use it as a candy bowl or even a candle holder so let's pop that in the cart there's a baggie here little bunny made in china She's got some chips and damage to the flowers on her hat. We'll leave that. Native doll. Dolls really isn't my area, so I'm going to leave that one for somebody else. 
What else do we have way on the bottom here? I'm checking all the way at the back, making sure I don't miss anything. Lots more dolls here. If you are a doll collector, Goodwill and thrift stores is a great place to expand your collection. Some more crystal bowls here. These aren't quite as nice quality as that other one and they don't have the nice silver band around. The other one had that lovely flare at the bottom that really set it apart. More candle holders, vases, koala figurines there. Those aren't uh, especially good quality. They're made of resin only sell for about eight to ten dollars so I tend to leave those on the shelf little thin metal hum hummingbird there baskets and bottles interesting trinket box there for six dollars has some damage to the petals so we'll leave that as well Souvenir pieces. I think that's a Teleflora vase. Could probably also be used as a candle holder. Party light angel. Some more bookends. It's a shell. This is interesting. It's a bag of salt and pepper shakers in the shape of fish. $4 for the whole bag. They are a bit tarnished, but that's to be expected for vintage pieces like this. They're really unique and very fun. So I think for $4, we will grab these. Oops that came apart it's a puppy more dolls wreaths balloon holders this is rather interesting it's a lovely lavender glass i think it's an ashtray but it looks like a bigfoot or a yeti footprint this is really super unique. It is $6, but for something <laughs> like this, I think it's an art glass project. You rarely ever see something like this. So uh, for $6, let's take a chance on it. We'll pop it carefully, <laughs> carefully in the cart. I can't wait to... Uh, see what you guys think of that piece figurines back here some damage on her candle holders bathroom bits if you're enjoying the video it would mean the world to me if you could give it a thumbs up Drop a comment below and subscribe to my channel with the little red button in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Several companies made these chicken on a nest trinket boxes. I think this one's Indiana glass, but Westmoreland, Hazel Atlas, Atterbury made them. Unfortunately, that one's missing its nest. Here's the matching candle holder to a whole set that was over here. So let's put it back with its friends. There we go. We are making our way into the seasonal section here. That party light sconce is still there. Oh, look at this pretty dish. It's green glass, $5. It looks like it's intended for a cup to go there soup and sandwich or tea and biscuits let's pop that in the cart and we'll take it home and during the haul we'll put a black light on it and see if it glows a paula dean mug some saint patrick's day bits sunflowers it's just a plain little cutting board there 
single coaster. Don't be discouraged if you feel like you're not finding much during a thrifting trip. As I always say, check every aisle and every shelf. You never know what you're going to find. Keep an open mind. Pick up things that call to you, things that you like. Chances are, if you like something, others are going to like it too. And if you need some reassurance that the item that you pick up is selling in the current market, take a look at eBay solds to give yourself peace of mind. Over there is what could be a beautiful piece of Italian pottery. It might even be Batossi. As I get closer, the lack of texture tells me it's not Batossi. It's very lightweight, so not Italian. I flip it over and it says Mexico on the bottom. So even though it's not Italian, this is a lovely vintage piece of Mexican pottery. I love the yellow. I love the design, the wavy lines. Let's definitely pop this in the cart. It's a beautiful planter. Here we are in the vases, planters and florals. Up top here is a project piece dish with some fake fruit. It's $5, unfortunately a bit worse for wear and very, very crazed. We'll leave that up there. Lots of clear glass, florist pieces, pieces that could be used as candle holders as well. These look like Riedel wine glasses, stemless wine glasses, although Riedels are usually, usually etched with the name. So those might be uh, by a similar company. What else do we have? This is a ground uh, stem there for a stopper. Unfortunately, the stopper is nowhere to be seen. The colored vases on the next shelf. Lots of pink today. Some familiar pieces we have looked at before. I find that vases are very plentiful and they do tend to sit a while in my eBay store and in my vintage booth. So unless something is very unique or of an extremely desirable brand, I tend to leave vases no matter how inexpensive they are on the shelf. You really want to be careful that you don't have a whole lot of the same thing sitting in your inventory, especially something uh, like a vase, which takes up quite a bit of room. Top shelf, some big pieces there. Moving on to the displays. This is a Hoosier green vase. I love these. I love the color. Unfortunately, uh, they don't sell too terribly well and only for about $10 to $12. So with the size and uh, the difficulty or challenge in packing those safely and the cost of shipping are just not worth it for me for resale. All sorts of florals and silks. And we are moving into the metal section. Silver metals are first. Always have to focus a bit in this section because everything blends together, as you can see. Looking for Nambe, the possibility that something sterling might sneak in. Definitely the little clips that hold uh, vintage dip bowls above the chip bowls. There is a vintage plate holder, the gold tone metals, lots of racks and baskets, bronze. Oh, this is pretty. Oh, I was expecting that actually to be brass, but it's very lightweight. I think it's just spray painted. The concept on this feather is very, very nice, but unfortunately the quality is just not there. More trays, sconces, into the black metal pieces. More racks, sconces, candle holders. 
this is a very useful uh, picture holder or bowl holder plate display you can even pop it on the wall with those two holes so we'll grab that colored metals on the last shelf here including tins Tins are quite popular at Christmas time. If you are a cookie baker, they are excellent to be able to pop your home baked goods into to present as gifts. Here we are in the kitcheny bits. Let's see what they have today. More of those bowls we saw over in the figurines aisle. And today they seem to have lots of little bottles with cork stoppers and screw tops. These are great for spices in the kitchen. You can even use them for beads and jewelry findings. So many uses and you'll find that they're really expensive if you go to buy them at retail. Here you can pick them up for 69 cents or a dollar baking dishes, bowls. I don't know about your goodwill, but here in Vegas, the kitcheny bit section always has so many items. If you need extras for a holiday, or you have people coming over, or even if you want to bake uh, for gifts, a pie, you can just go ahead, come to Goodwill, buy a pie dish and uh, include the pie dish with your gift of the pie to a lucky recipient. It's such a great idea for just a couple of dollars and that way you don't have to worry about getting your own dish back. The same goes at potlucks. If the dish disappears, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I look at this every time. It's a vintage little mug, has a big chip on it. And this time it's lost its price tag. I really hope it doesn't go in the landfill. If it's here the next time, we will definitely have to pop it in the cart and save it from the landfill. Moving on into the kettles and pots and pans here. Another little cork um, glass jar there. We'll have to put that with its friends in a minute. Muffin tins and baking tins. I'm having a little glance at the mugs over in the opposite section. Although I've promised myself no more mugs until I sell through the ones that I have both on eBay, in my eBay Bay store and in my booth at the Good Stuff thrift store. Little sake cups, I think. Travel tumblers more big pans. I just want to take a second to show you this piece. It's an amber lidded baker that looks a lot like Pyrex, but it's actually marked Pyro Ray. I have one of these. It's really nice quality. It does a lovely job baking and serving, uh, but unfortunately they just don't sell too well on eBay. So I'm going to leave it on the shelf. Some of you have asked why I don't start in this first aisle of the hard goods section. And it's because it is all seasonal, mostly uh, Christmas, but this first section is fall and Halloween, uh, with the exception of this little stainless steel tray and these pencils with these weird little ball bearings. What are these? Does anybody know? As I was saying, mostly seasonal and uh, Christmas bits on this aisle. So I do tend to start in the figurines, uh, which tend to appeal to a wider audience here. Let's see. Fall items, candles. This is an interesting project. I'm not sure whether it's for a candle or for a wine bottle. I'm sure you could use it for either. Even a glass of ours for flowers. That pillar is a bit wide for it. Doesn't quite sit in there. Lots of pumpkins. 
and frames, crafty bits over here. Here in Vegas, our Goodwills have a massive Christmas in July event. So come at the end of June, these shelves will be overflowing with all sorts of Christmas excitement. Um, so we can stock up on holiday uh, inventory before the season hits. Not really sure what those are. I think they're little place card or photo holders. We're really getting into the Christmas now. Wreaths. Ooh, this is a vintage lampshade. In very nice condition. Some trees. Bunt pan. Not Nordic wear. That one's very lightweight. Nordic wear is a great um, brand that you want to look out for. Some of their pans can sell over a hundred dollars, but it has to be the right one. The Yule Log one is one I've sold before, and there's one with uh, pineapples on it uh, that also sells well. Mugs, Christmas glasses, lots of plates. Here's another little vase. This is a great tip. If you want to make a flower display, put tape across like this one way and then across the other way. And it gives you little holes to put your stems in and uh, keeps them from all being over one side or the other. That's a really good life hack as they <laughs> refer to them these days. I call them tips. More wreaths plates and platters and wall displays, frames. This aisle seems to be the overflow for the other side. Mugs. There's a fish tank here. As I say, you never know what you're going to find. Oh, look at this lovely big box of thank you cards. What a super design. I love to include a thank you card in with items I ship out from orders, from the hauls at the end of my videos and from eBay sales and Poshmark sales. I think it just adds a personal touch of gratitude to take the time to write a thank you note. Uh, so if you buy something from me, you might just receive one of those thank you cards in with your order. Back behind the cozy soup mugs is this wall broom. Unfortunately, it's in rough shape, it's unraveling, so we'll leave that on the shelf. Here is a gorgeous carved elephant, massive fork. Unfortunately, one of the prongs is broken off, so we'll have to leave that as well. This looks like a kit to build a human tooth. That is really interesting and quite educational. Uh, it is new in the package, and I'm sure this is a good find. Not sure how old it is, but let's pop it in the cart and keep going. It's a cat tile framed, not ever such good quality, $4. I'm going to leave that. Some plaques and signs here. Baskets. And letters. These are vintage teak napkin holders. I love the mid-century square shape of these. They're in like new condition, as you can see in the original packet. So let's definitely pop those into our cart. This is quite a nice metal flower, but very scratched. So we'll leave it. We are on our second go round of the shelves here. This lovely Indiana glass tri-footed bowl has been here way too long. Let's rescue it from the shelf and pop it in the cart.
here we are in the frames and the artwork. I am asked so many questions about art. How do I know what art to pick up? What will sell? What will be popular? I tend to go with my gut on art. I'll pick up pieces that I would like to have hanging in my home and hanging in my booth so I can enjoy them until they sell. I know I always say look for originals, look for vintage. This piece, for example, is an original. And then I ask myself, would somebody like to have this in their home? If the answer is yes, and I am low on inventory, I'll pick it up. But like today, when I have quite a lot in stock, and I'm just on the fence about whether I'd hang it in my own home, I'll go ahead and leave it for somebody else. This is a lovely photograph of uh, a dock, I believe, beautiful sky. It is huge. And again, because I have a lot of pieces in my inventory at the moment, I'm going to leave it uh, on the shelf here. This piece of somebody's vacation picture is still here. And on that note, we'll call it a day. Here on my dining table is everything I found at Goodwill. Ziggy is here supervising the operation as usual. <laughs> Hi Ziggy. First we have <laughs> these lovely Japanese teak napkin rings. They are sealed in the original package. They have a sticker on the end, made in Japan. They're absolutely lovely. They're in great condition. They don't seem to be dried out at all. Perfect for a mid-century home. You could also use them as risers or display pieces for globes, glass balls, Christmas decorations, anything you wanted to really. I paid $4 for these. And I am going to ask $25. Next, we have a lovely little party light watermelon tea light holder. Let me peel the $2 sticker here and I'll show you. It has its party light label. As I said, I paid $2 for it. And uh, I am going to ask $15. Next, we have our Bulldog Angel Zelda Wisdom a little standing plaque here. You can pop it on a desk or it does have a hook built in for hanging. I didn't notice until I got it home, but it does have a little chip at one corner. Let me zoom in to show you. I have um, colored it with a felt pen there and I'm going to go over it with a little bit of nail polish and uh, it's barely noticeable as you can see. I paid three dollars for it and with that damage I'm going to ask fifteen dollars. Next are Goldinger lead crystal little bowl nut bowl candy bowl you could put a candle in it i absolutely love the flared bottom there it really makes it shine it's just a beautiful piece i paid five dollars for it and i'm going to ask 25 dollars this piece is the sleeper that i didn't recognize Unbelievably, this is actually a piece of Blenko glass from the 1960s. And in my research, I found clear and blue and amber, but none in this absolutely phenomenal lavender color. Look at this color. It's just gorgeous. It is a Bigfoot Yeti Sasquatch print and uh, really thick glass. It is an ashtray. A nice divot here, probably best for a cigar. I paid up for it $6, as you know. Uh, and the ones I found online, 
varied from about 40 all the way um, up just shy of $100. But again, I haven't found a lavender one. So if anybody um, is able to find a lavender or you have a lavender and can give me an idea of value, please do leave me a comment or send me an email. Um, I'll pop my email down here on the bottom here for you. And uh, let's move on to the next piece, which was a planter that I initially thought could be Italian pottery until I got close and picked it up. When I find it, I found out it's actually either paper mache or a light resin. Nevertheless, it is vintage. It's beautiful. I believe the bottom says Mexico, but look at these colors. It would be absolutely amazing on a high shelf with a trailing plant in it. Just stunning. I paid $4 for it. I am going to ask $25. So I don't know how many times I've passed this piece on the shelf. Today was the day I just couldn't leave it, leave it behind. It's a frosted diamond point Indiana glass tri-footed bowl. Again, you could use it for nuts, for candy, a little plant, a candle. I paid $3 for it, and I am going to ask $20. I went a little outside of my comfort zone on this one. <laughs> it's a Lindbergh science kit, um, an assembled kit of the human tooth. So you put this together. It includes everything except the paint, apparently. Uh, it says, ideal for study and school science project. It's hinged, so the whole thing opens up once you've built it to show the nerves and the inside of the tooth, the blood vessels, all that wonderful stuff. Um, it's new in the package. It's never been opened. I paid up for it a bit, $8. I am going to ask $20. Last but not least, we have our two vintage uh, salt and pepper sets. They're both sets of fish. They look like uh, Asian koi to me. Definitely vintage. Uh, these two do not have stoppers. Uh, this pair do. As you can see, they are well loved. Some of the finish is coming off, but they would make a wonderful display if you have a nautical theme. Look at these. I am going to ask $15 a set on those. So 15 and 15. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my thrifting trip to Goodwill and the haul. If you see anything you're interested in purchasing, please send me an email, thriftingvegas.tiffany at gmail.com. Please include your name, your address, the item you're interested in, the price I quoted, or your offer. Please stay tuned. I have some fun footage of Bear and Rio, our German Shepherds, our cats, and of course, our sweet little hummingbirds. Thank you again for watching. Please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and hit that subscribe button, and I will see you next time. Bye! Several of you have sent messages to ask about the different marks on the base of Namaji pottery. <laughs> Hi Ziggy, are you here? Hi. So I thought I would show you uh, the different marks on the three pieces that I currently have here. The first is this bowl, really lovely oranges and browns and tans on this one. And it has the Indian head mark. This mark was used uh, after 1980. So this is a relatively newer piece. It's a lovely clay piece. The regular top tells us it was handmade. It's glazed inside and unglazed on the outside. And the way they make these beautiful patterns with the paint is they uh, drip 
oil paint on water, add a little bit of vinegar, and then they dip the clay pieces into the water and the oil paint sticks uh, onto the pottery piece, leaving these gorgeous patterns. And as they pull the piece out, they give it a twist, which uh, makes the paint swirl around. This next one is a wedding vase. Again, beautiful designs. This is in oranges and yellows and red. Looks like fire over a mountain to me. Just gorgeous. This piece also has the Indian head mark. It's a little bit of a different color. I'm not sure if that uh, tells us which decade it came from. This is sort of a, a tan color. And if you remember, the bowl was black. The third piece is this lovely vase. You might have seen me thrift in my last video. This is black and red with a little bit of orange. Again, just gorgeous. This looks like a volcano. And this one has Namaji Pottery USA. This mark was used between 1930 and 1980. There are a couple more marks. There is um, an arrowhead which I believe is the oldest mark. That's uh, 1920 to 1930. And there's also a canoe. Uh, I believe um, some of you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the canoe was about the same time as the arrowhead. This is Namaji Pottery. This piece is sold. These two pieces are currently available. If anyone has interest, send me an email, thriftingvegas.tiffany at gmail.com. So Chris has cooked up some of the trout we caught uh, at Navajo Lake and um, <laughs> He cooked one up for the dogs, so Bear and Rio are waiting not so patiently here in the kitchen for a taste. Rio, please. Are you ready? Rio, please. Please. Good girl. Bear, can you speak? Speak. Bear, speak. 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 <laughs> Bear, speak. 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 Bear. Oh, there. Good boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> is that delicious? Here's it. Oh, good boy, bear. Good boy, bear. Here you go. Oh, he's a good boy. <laughs>